So my house has one of these weird, awkward front rooms that most people turn into those sitting rooms that had that really fancy furniture that was super uncomfortable and nobody was ever allowed to sit in. Well, I always thought those were a waste of space. So what I did with mine is I turned it into a bar. So it's got all the basic setups of a bar. I have the bar itself, I have a dartboard, a mounted TV, tap handles, and waffles. But beyond that, it's kind of super basic and really kind of boring. So I want to jazz it up. And this is the theme I'm going to go with. It looks a lot like Peaky Blinders meets Art Deco. And the first spot we're going to start with is the wall behind me. So let's get started. Okay, actually the first thing I want to start with is the lights. Because I think that's going to be the hardest thing to do. So right now I have this one light connected to this switch, which controls an outlet down there. What I want to do is add six can lights across the ceiling that are controlled by this switch. Now, in order to do that, I got to do something with this outlet, which is something along the lines of there's like three wires that go to this one. I have to switch off and I have to switch this out and I don't really know. And then I got to take a wire and run it up through the ceiling here and then through the rafters that way and then get the wire up to that way, through the rafters, down this way, over and back that way, or some way through the rafters. I don't know how to do that. But really, how hard can it be? Yeah, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. So, all right, power's off. I was able to get the plug switched over to where it gets constant power in both top and bottom, and then connect the wires so that all the power is being ran right over to that switch right there. Now that is where I had all of the problem. And the problem was that wire right there. Okay, so what the problem was, was when I had the power on and this switch on, everything was working perfect. But the second I switched this off, it would blow the breaker downstairs. And the reason for that was this wire right here. Hey, how's it going everybody? Little context to this. Doing that, I guess, is called shorting your mains. Uh, in the electrical world, it's considered not a good idea to do. Very dangerous. So if you're ever in my situation, you don't really know exactly what you're doing and you're dealing with something like electricity, please exercise caution. It's a dangerous situation. You still got to learn somehow. Just be careful. So how I originally had this hooked up was I had the power that was coming from either your outlet or your box was coming up in here. And then I also had it tied off to the power line that's going down to my lights. And I had them braided together, going straight into one, then I had the neutrals on into another one. Come to find out, that was wrong. What you need to do is have a power, and then a power, braid your neutrals off, same thing with your ground, and it's gonna work. So if you're ever in a situation where you're trying to run this and you have everything hooked up the way you think it should be, which kind of looks logical to me, but I'm still just an amateur, and every time you switch the light off, it blows the breaker, it's because of that. And I went all over the internet trying to figure out why it was doing that. But also at the same time, I came across this video, which I wanna say, screw that guy. Because I cannot stand when someone says, well, if you don't know what you're doing, you have no business doing it. Nobody knows what they're doing the first couple times they do it. It's all, all a learning curve. I guess this guy was born with the knowledge of a master electrician. Okay, so that's my rant, but now that that's over, I changed my mind again about the ceiling. I originally was just gonna do six can lights or six thin LED lights up through here, but then I thought it would look really cool if we do coffered ceilings. So that's what I'm gonna do. It can't be that hard, right? So I got everything taped up, lined up, which was a freaking nightmare. The hardest part so far is what I've noticed is trying to tape everything off and line everything up perfect. There is a ton of math involved in it, and I didn't go to school for geology. Okay, so I apologize for the hoodie, but it is seven degrees outside, and it's only 23 degrees in my garage, and that's where I'm doing all the work right now. But I did want to show you, I just got one of these, a track saw. It's the wind track saw. I've always wanted a track saw, but I never really could justify getting one just because I didn't think I would really ever use it. But now that I gotta make a ton of very, very straight, long cuts, figured why not, let's get one. And I got to win the cheapest one just because, like I said, I would rarely ever use this, so I didn't really feel justifiable for shilling out like four to $600 on a really nice one when I would only use it maybe once every couple months. So that's why I went with the win.
You'll see up in the top left hand corner the layout of exactly how I'm doing this. First, I'm just starting with the 2x4s. These are going to be the basic starting point of the frame of the coffered ceiling. Then I'm putting in a small 1x2 spacers for the MDF. I'm using MDF because I want it to look as clean as possible and MDF is about to smooth this thing out there. Then I'm moving on to the baseboards that's going to wrap up the entire framing and set up for the crown molding. Everything up to this point was going extremely smooth. This actually only took about four hours to get to this point. Okay, so all the baseboard is up on the ceiling. The cabinet and shelves are done and they're put in. So now the next thing to do is just the crown molding. Okay, so I'm just gonna jump in here real quick. I already made a video about the whole ceiling and put it out. If you wanna watch it, it's this one. You hear me say the beginning portion of the only took a couple hours to do, but the crown molding ended up taking three weeks because it, ugh. Oh, no, I hate it. I do figure it out in the end. So if you want to learn how to do crown molding pretty quickly and easily, just jump to that video and go right to the end. But in this video, I'm just going to go ahead and skim over it kind of quickly because there's a lot of content in this video and I want to, don't want to make it an hour and a half long. Nope. Fuck. That sucks. Fucking stupid fucking piece of... I don't know. No, it doesn't f***ing work. It doesn't. It's not cut right. I followed the f***ing directions perfectly. I do not possess the vocabulary to be able to describe to you how much I hate crown molding. Okay, so I'm finally done touching up all the spots on the ceiling, so now all I gotta do is tape everything off and spray. Okay, so you can see by the terrible lighting in here, I have everything taped off, it's ready to be... Damn it. Okay, so you can see by the terrible lighting in here, I have everything taped off, covered up, and it's ready to be sprayed. Now, I did get a new toy for this. I got the Greco 360 airless sprayer. Now, I've never actually used one of these airless sprayers. I do have the big brother to this, but that thing would be crazy overkill for this little room. It takes like a half a gallon of paint just to prime the lines in that thing. So this, I think, is going to work perfect. Now, I'm not actually going to do a review on this because I've never actually used an airless sprayer, so I don't really have anything to compare it to. I will tell you my opinion on it as an amateur who's never used one. Is it easy to use? Is it worth it? I'll, give, I'll let you know. God, the lighting is here. Okay, so here's the sprayer. It's ready to go. Let's... <gasps> Why would I do that? Dude, this thing is dope. I would definitely get one. You gotta get one of these, it's so easy to use. All right, the ceiling, it's finally done. And I actually think it looks really good, enough. But now that the ceiling's all done, now I'm gonna move on to installing these, the LED lights. These are gonna go up behind the back of the crown molding up through there. It's gonna go all the way around the whole entire room. And then I'm gonna move on to this wall. This wall is gonna be all black. It's gonna have the design on it. So let's just go ahead and get started with that. Okay, so for the pattern on the black wall, this is what I'm going with. Now pictured down there is the floor, up here is the ceiling. It's gonna be a whole floor to ceiling pattern. And this is basically just gonna replicate itself all the way down the wall. But now what I wanna do is paint this, this, and this black so it matches the wall. But I wanna leave these four squares or diamonds the natural wood look, because I think that's gonna actually look really nice against the black wall. But now in order to do that, I have to paint all of these, which is quite a bit, but luckily I have my sprayer. Now about this sprayer, I told you I've never used a small handheld sprayer like this before. I do have the bigger brother of this, which I do like, but this is the first time I ever used a small airless one. So I didn't really have anything to compare it to to say like, oh, this is really good, really not. But from a new user first time, this thing is genuinely amazing. I would wholeheartedly suggest this to literally anybody who does a lot of small painting projects. I would not use this thing to do a whole entire room. That's why I use the rollers on the walls. But for doing something like the ceiling or something like this, what I'm about to do, 100%. 100% this thing's gonna make it a million times easier.
Okay, so here's all the pieces for the design. I did want to put them together and paint them. That way when I put them on the wall, all I have to do is a couple little minor finishing touches to make them look really good. So now all I gotta do is get these things on the wall, then do some final touches on some of the seams, cover up all the little nail holes, and we'll be good. Thank you. Okay, so I think I figured this out. So I cut this, which is the same gap right here. So all I gotta do is put this here, line it right up to there. This lines up to here. Put this piece on, tap it in place. Now this is perfectly lined up with this. The space between all of these are gonna be exactly the same. Now all I gotta do is take my, this, put it here, and then I can line up my next big one. Yeah. Okay, so you can see it starts to take shape now. This is gonna look really cool. Oh God, did I put the odor on? Eesh. Holy crap, this is looking so good. What? 10 out of 10. This is genuinely awesome. I am so excited about how good this looks. Look how nice this turned out. Everything is perfect. I am pretty impressed. I did not screw this up. So now that that's done, I got one more thing to do in this room and it's gonna be completely done. And it's with this whole corner right here. It's all white and pretty boring. So what I wanna do is bring that natural wood look over to here. And I did have some shelves over here, but they're really ugly. So. I want to add shelves back to this, but I also want to make them look like kind of cool and still natural look and got a modern vibe to it. So this is what I'm going to do. I cut a whole bunch of these cedar slats because cedar is honestly my favorite wood. I love working with it. I love the smell of it. I love the just coloration of it. It looks great. But I cut a whole bunch of these slats at different lengths and I want to put them on the wall kind of like this just all the way up and down. And I'm also going to put them over here kind of like matching this wall. And I also made them, cut them at 45 so I can make them into French cleats so I can add shelving wherever I want it to be. Now, if you don't know what a French cleat is, they're actually really, really cool and very simple to do. The first thing you wanna do is cut your piece of wood that's gonna be on your wall. And you always cut with a 45 degree angle across the top. And then you make your shelf. Now the back part of the shelf, you wanna have a matching 45 degree angle. And then you want a front plate, and then you want your actual top shelf. Then how this works, is this is gonna be on the wall, then you set this right in there and it locks. So what it looks like on the wall is you take your wall plate with that 45, just like that, take your shelf and you slip it right in there. So simple. And with this front plate, the more weight you put on this, the more pressure is being pushed on this front plate into the wall, which locks it into place. These things are absolutely amazing for if you ever want to do a lot of shelving, but you want to be able to move it, you could take these off, move it down, however long this is, or however many you have of these, you could just move your shelf here. You can just take it, slide it down, put it on different ones. They're really cool, very versatile.
for coming in for the interview. 